What's up guys, Jeremiah here from Babylon in my backyard. I'm super stoked that I reached a thousand subscribers. I've got a lot of great videos coming and I know you guys love build videos so I do have some really cool build videos coming soon. But this video we're going to talk about the care of the ponds in the fall time. And that's about where we're at right now. The weather's starting to change. We're about to get our first rain in a very long time here in Oregon. Stick around, check those out. Today's video, we're going to get into the pond. Um, I'm going to suit up and I'm going to get in there. I'm going to take care of the water lilies. Uh, I'm going to take care of some of the plants in the filtration system, but we'll talk about those individually and what we need to do with those. The other thing we're going to be doing is getting over into the intake bay over here and we're going to be cleaning that out. So the reason that's so overpopulated with plants is because some of the plants in the wetland filter have broken free and moved across the pond to get over to here and rerouted themselves into there. So there's kind of a mat of roots, which we don't want. That's this pond here. We're also going to talk about the other ponds in the front. Um, so what do we do with water hyacinth and water lettuce? and some of the other aerating plants that we have. Okay, so the first one I wanted to actually talk about was water hyacinth and water lettuce. Water hyacinth is very popular for putting in ponds. It has these really long root systems. These plants do an excellent job at removing toxins from the water when they're healthy, but when they start dying off, and especially when the roots start dying, they actually create gases that can be harmful to the pond. So you want to get these things out of here early. The other thing that a lot of people put in their ponds is water lettuce. Water lettuce is just like water hyacinth, a really long root system. In this pond we have goldfish. I have shut it off. I'll kick it back on once we get it all cleaned up. These roots are still looking pretty healthy on some of these. So we're getting them out before the roots start getting gross. I just wanted to show you a couple different ways to get these out of here. You don't have to have a net, but you want to go low and then scoop up. One thing that I will do is I'm going to keep a couple of these aside and then I'll keep them in a greenhouse so that I can have some next year. Just to get rid of the last bits of decay, we'll go ahead and get in here and scoop some of those dead pieces. Oh, there's another one in there too. That should be good. The next one is this one down here. I don't have to clean this up right now, but I like to, to get the top layer of this off in the fall. How I do that is kind of just like I'm getting spaghetti. Mmm, spaghetti. What's going to happen is this is going to drain down. All of these plants will start to settle downward and then when it fills back up from the waterfall above, majority of this stuff will stay lower and then uh, the water level will come up above them. Okay, one other thing I want to note for the changing season, the water temperature is cooling down, so the food that I have been feeding them, which is a higher growth food, 
I am going to be switching that out. So what I have been using is this product here on the screen. This is a fantastic food and I mix it with a microbe lift product. But in the winter time, I switch over to this product because this one is a better one for all season. So they can be fed this food through the different temperature changes. Now, I will say, no matter what you feed them, the amount you feed them goes down now. I'll be doing the all season food two times a day for a while until the temperatures get below 50 degrees. Keep in mind, I was feeding these guys four to five times a day with this while the temperatures were high. And I have all the filtration to handle that. You do need a lot of filtration if you're gonna feed them that much. What I'm gonna do now is go ahead and get these plants cleaned up. So I'm just gonna bring over one at a time, my hardy white water lilies. Just chop them right at the couple inches out of the pot. I was gonna have another flower. It's kind of a weird time. Uh, I mean, this, the temperatures are still decent right now, but I do know that they will be changing soon. I got two flowers coming out of this pot still. So that's all I want to do. Then I'm going to get that back into the water. But what I'm actually going to do is move it back towards the back corner because the back corner is the deepest. And I just want to get it down further into the water. Pretty simple. Again, this is gonna to go to the deeper part of the pond. There is some more dead stuff in here. I'm gonna to try to get that as close as I can to the bottom. Some really weird stuff going on in here. I am not sure what that is. If you have a clue what this stuff is here, it feels jelly like. The water is drained out all at that level now. But whatever those are, have like a jelly slime all over them. Get these dragonfly larvae back into the water. I suppose I'll just leave those there because I don't know what they are. Okay, so I'm gonna work from that corner back over this direction. Um, cutting all of that stuff. Those are not in a separate pot, those are a smaller lily and they are just planted back against that wall. All of this came from that pot. It just keeps replanting all through this log. 
it's growing. This log is hollowed out. You can't even see the log from there, but there's a log all the way from here to there. And it's about eight feet long, and it's hollow all the way through the middle. So these plants have just rooted through the center of this log. Kind of cool. I will take one more sweep around the pond with a net just so that I can clean out all of this debris that I've made a mess of. Something else I should note, if you don't have a net like this over your pond, you're gonna have a ton of leaves. I get very few leaves because I net my pond. To keep fish safe from predators, it also prevents all the leaves from the giant oak tree there or some of these maples from falling in here. You're gonna need to get in here and do this just to get a lot of the dead leaves out of the bottom if you're not netting. I mean, it doesn't matter how much skimming you do when it's fall, it's not fall yet completely. The leaves have not started falling, but I prevent a lot of leaves from getting in my pond just from the net being here. This stuff is uh, really easy to clean up, but it does spread like crazy, so. <laughs> this is literally rooted into the wall and everywhere else, so. Getting the roots out is important for me right now so that it doesn't all come back. These root mats have eaten up the rock that was all here. So as I pull them out, I'm taking rock out too, but I got more rock. I wanted to fill up more. Anyways, this has happened before. I talked about this in another video. I don't know if I mentioned, but the water level in this pond is extremely low. I did say in the beginning of the video, we have not had rain in a very long time, but this weekend we're supposed to get quite a bit of it. As for the wetland filter, I do not need to do a lot up here. This marsh marigold, I'll cut back way later in the when it's almost winter time. This is just coming back. Check out a video that I have coming soon for this one. But yeah, this one's just coming back and it likes the colder weather, so it's just thriving. For the pickerel weed. This stuff I don't want to cut back right now because it'll try to shoot up new shoots uh, and it won't be the right weather for it. So I wait until the springtime to cut this one back and it'll all be dead and kind of laying over but that's okay. I just grab all that dead stuff and cut it up. If you want to see that how that works there is a video that I've, I showed how to do this. It's up in the corner. Actually there's a couple videos that I've done on this one that are in the description below. The only thing that I have to worry about is all of this stuff. This is the same plant that made it all the way over to the intake bay. It kind of just flows out of here. There's literally a waterfall under this, but you can't even see it. You don't get to enjoy it because this stuff cascaded over and kind of took over. 
So I'm gonna pull this whole thing out. All right guys, that does it for this video. Hopefully you got something out of this. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and go and subscribe to the channel, please. It does uh, a lot for us. And we do have a lot of cool videos, cooler than this video even. I mean, cleanup videos are unnecessary, but the build videos are really what get people engaged. Um, so go check some of those out. We'll see you in the next video.